It's November 24th. Happy Thanksgiving. And another remarkable event is about to be uncovered by... Aria, Rebecca, and Ali. The Retrospectors. She walked upright, but looked like an ape. A nightmare review on eHarmony. But revelatory news on this day in Hadar, Ethiopia, when paleontologist Donald Johansson and Tom Gray realised they had uncovered the remains of an Australopith, an ape-like creature with a tiny brain that came to be known as the Lucy Fossil. Yeah, it's funny because it is one of those stories quite like Carter digging up Tutankhamun that has this accidental discovery myth attached to it where Johansson and his graduate student colleague Tom Gray were just hooning around in their Land Rover discovery coming back actually from searching for presumably more upright standing humans and stumbled across a proximal ulna, a forearm bone and quickly identified it as hominid and then sort of looked around and found a of a skull bone and then some femur and ribs and pelvis and you know it just began with this with this chance meeting in a gully and then they were like oh wait a second we've got a really significant find here and the really strange thing is that apparently the gully had already been explored twice but it seems like they found a decent amount of bones kind of just sitting on the sand like sort of yeah. sticking out a tiny bit so I don't know, maybe it was a very big gully. They probably didn't have that many people, you know, and you're not going to have like a forensic police level of searching when you're looking for someone <laughs> who's been dead for millions and millions of years. Paleoanthropologists in a line on their hands and knees. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and when they discovered the Lucy fossil, they didn't even have a term for what the species was. It was the discovery of her and then obviously the first family the following year that led to the development of this new category, this new species. I mean, it might be a little bit boring, but it might be worth a quick note on the terms because I didn't know what kind of creature Lucy was really very specifically until I started looking into this. So you've got your hominids, which is what you call the great apes, which includes humans. This was news to me. Humans. Yes. chimps gorillas you know all of the ape creatures and then they're not all homo no they're not homo these are homi no homo no no <laughs> ollie come on now it's not 2010 and then you had the apes on one hand and then you had humans and chimpanzees basically the early ancestors both together and then the development towards humans split apart from the development into like modern chimpanzees that's homonina Homonina, yeah. probably, depending. Mm -hmm. And so Lucy was a member of that family, and the specific species was the Australopithecus afarensis, after the Afar Triangle, where they found the remains. But that discovery that all of these bones contributed to just one skeleton, you can understand then this massive party that they had later that night, which is what resulted in this rather prosaic name that they gave the skeleton at first, which was AL288-1. <laughs> in the sky with diamonds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, because Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds was playing on the stereo at the party that evening. So good thing it wasn't f the police. <laughs> <laughs> and actually in Ethiopia, she is not known as Lucy. She is known in the local Amharic language as Dinkinesh, which means you are marvellous, which I think is quite lovely. But Lucy is the name that caught on internationally and she sort of became a bit of a sensation, this female, rather unusual looking creature that I agree with the description that you had at the top of this, Ollie, that from the reconstructions I've seen, she really does look like someone who's had really intense cheek fillers, um, <laughs> you know, like a sort of faded LA star with plastic surgery gone wrong. Um, is this okay with you, Rebecca? Are you allowed to judge? Females, bone specimens from a perspective of three million years. <laughs> it depends. Are you allowed to make fun of how chimpanzees look? Possibly. That's still on the table. Are you allowed to make fun of how humans look? That's kind of a grey area now. So this one is a bit yeah. difficult. In, really in between. <laughs> but the discovery of Lucy was not greeted with joy by all scientists. A lot of rival fossil hunters had wanted a discovery like that for themselves mm. and had spent generations building up to such a moment. In fact, Johansson wrote in his autobiography, I was called a prima donna, a slick operator, a publicity <laughs> hound. I lost friends, including some of my closest colleagues in the field, whose interpretations of humanity's origins were thrown into serious doubt by Lucy. It's mm. obviously sour grapes now, from this perspective. But in the 70s, you can imagine, in the paleontological community, there must have been people thinking, well, if we don't get behind this, if we don't admit what this is, we can cling on to our own notoriety, and we, who knows, we might find something better. 
Yeah, and I think that one of the things that Lucy and a few skeletons like her really contributed to a different understanding, they disrupted the idea that massive brains were what denoted the hominid lineage. And what she suggested was actually that bipedalism was something that came first because she was actually a creature that walked on her rear legs, even though she still had quite long arms that uh, reached down to the ground and she could climb trees and so on. But what we learnt was that 3.2 million years ago, the ancestors of people were walking on their hind legs. And that was really a, a sort of overturning a whole lot of thinking up until the early 20th century, where scientists thought that it was big brains that made hominids unique. Because going by her skull size, Lucy actually had a really small brain. Obviously, we know that the size of the brain doesn't correlate, you know, with brain power necessarily. But there was like an interesting explanation for why that was. And it's to do with the fact that she would have been eating like plants and roots and grasses. So like gorillas, these hominids would have used the vast majority of their blood supply digesting all these vast amounts of raw plant matter and that has an impact on brain function. So that's one reason that their brain function didn't develop. She also wouldn't have spoken we think language would not emerge for at least another million years even by the earliest estimation. Yeah. So she would have been making, you know, maybe like grunts and noises but certainly nothing that we would recognise as speech. Particularly after a big meal of grass. <laughs> <be> like, <"Whoa." laughs> they now reckon anatomically modern humans emerged in Africa less than 200,000 years ago. That's the amazing thing. And what's astonishing about Lucy is that her particular species, the Australopithecus afarensis, lived for about a million years, they think. And yeah. we've only been on the planet in our current form as Homo sapiens for 200,000 years. So like, well, a fifth that's of the very contentious. Time. I've read the Bible, Arian. And I've <laughs> Sorry. Mine. Yes, good point. <laughs> Worth mentioning. <laughs> Adam and Eve. But I mean, a lot of the disquiet that there was at the time in the paleontological community has subsided. Um, for example, in the 70s, Donald Johansson made an enemy of Richard Leakey, who was the son of Louis Leakey. The Louis Leakey? <laughs> <laughs> he was the guy who demonstrated that humans had evolved in Africa. So he had a real reputation then amongst mm. people who follow this sort of stuff. And they had a spat on TV on the Walter Cronkite show. Sadly, the archive is no longer available to see on YouTube. Um, and Well, here's a description from the New York Times of what happened. As I said, you can't watch it anymore. Uh, Dr. Johansson held up a chart showing his Lucy version of the human family tree. Next to it was a blank space in which he invited Mr. Leakey to draw his version. So he's basically <laughs> saying, OK, so I'm wrong. What's right then? What do you Feeli got? What do you got? Feeling trapped, Mr. Leakey finally took a pen and placed a large X through Dr. Johansson's tree. <laughs> well, what would you draw in its place, Dr. Johansson asked. A question mark, said Mr. Leakey. And so he did with a bold flourish. <laughs> wow. Leakey was like, okay, well, I've realised that humans originated in Africa. Nobody elaborate on this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Africa is mine, everybody. Every other white person, please stay away. Only I get to dig here. <laughs> and obviously talking about something that's so deep into prehistory means there's absolutely no way we could know for sure what their society might have looked like, how similar it might have been to that of, you know, chimps or gorillas or indeed to humans. We do know that they had arms that were similar to an orangutan's, but we don't know if that's because they actually lived in trees and swung around in trees or whether they just inherited it from earlier ancestors. But one thing that paleontologists have suggested is that their society was polygynous. That's where one male has many females. And the way that they can tell this is because of something called sexual dimorphism, which is like the physical differences between males and females. And when there's a high degree of difference, which there is in the Lucy fossil, you can tell that it was a female, because the males have these overdeveloped builds because they have to compete with other males for the scarce resources because if one male has many females obviously there aren't many females left to choose mm. from so they're more likely to be fighting for dominance and fighting for females so they've got like these more developed physiques and if you're imagining sort of caveman size people as well you're way off so uh, lucy is considered an adult because her wisdom teeth were fully erupted but she was only three and a half feet tall so it turns out that back then you'd reach adulthood around the age of 11, and that was it. Three and a half foot tall. Yeah. Whereas, I mean, now very old people are three and a half foot tall, but they're even taller <laughs> in between. <laughs> um, actually, it's making me think that Captain Caveman was quite accurate because he was tiny, wasn't he? I don't think that cartoon gets enough credit. Very fair point. I just feel sorry for those that spend an entire career and find nothing. I, I saw this paleontologist on YouTube basically saying, you have to understand... In my career, I am expecting to find nothing. And if I do find something, it will probably be an isolated tooth. 
Wow. You just imagine, like, you see, you hear all these stories of Daring Do and, like, discovering our common ancestors. You find a tooth. <laughs> you know, this is so rare. Mind you, so many careers are dependent on a lucky break. You know, just get out there in your Land Rover, work harder, dude. How have you managed to translate this story into a pull your socks up style metaphor? <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow. And then you had his biological father and the Cuban government saying, we want him back. Ditch the ads and get a Sunday episode when you join Club Retrospectors. Subscribe now on Apple Podcasts, part of the ACAST Creator Network.